It's finally here. Update 2.13 has arrived and brings a long-awaited feature. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3, or FSR3 for short. This update introduces the next version of the popular upscaling technology, which allows for even higher FPS. Since many of you are probably very interested in this, here's the info right away. According to the patch notes, this update doesn't include any gameplay changes or bug fixes, none at all in any direction. I'll come back to this topic later. For now, it's clear that this update is fully focused on the upscaler technology, not just AMDs, but also those from NVIDIA and Intel. However, I have to disappoint some of you right off the bat. The update is only for PCs. Whether CD Projekt Red will make FSR 3 available for consoles remains unclear. Technically, it might be possible, but I'm neither a developer nor a technician, so I can't really say for sure. Important note, since this is a PC-only update, the version numbers will differ. But this shouldn't be a problem for the cross-save system, so there's no need to worry about that. Naturally, this update will break certain mods, which will need to be updated. So if you're having trouble launching Cyberpunk 2077 after the update, this is very likely the cause. If you have a lot of mods installed, you might want to hold off on updating until the mod authors have had a chance to update their mods. All right, with all the caveats out of the way, let's talk about the actual changes. The patch notes state that support for AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 with frame generation has been added. There's also an important note you can find on CD Projekt Red's support page. It explains, AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 combines image upscaling with frame generation technologies to generate high-resolution frames at fast frame rates. You can enable it in Settings, Graphics in the Quick Preset section. There's also a separate setting to enable FSR frame generation. One thing to note, FSR frame generation can only be used if FSR 3 is enabled. It's unfortunate that the devs didn't go straight for FSR 3.1, the newest version, which would have allowed frame generation to work with other upscalers as well, delivering even better results. It's also worth mentioning that frame generation only works properly if you're running at 60 FPS or higher. If not, according to the support page, visual artifacts become more noticeable at lower frame rates, and frame rate stability can become an issue. A 120 Hz monitor or higher is recommended because lower refresh rate monitors can cause frame rate inconsistencies. Additionally, FSR frame generation requires that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling be enabled in your operating system. In Windows 11, this option is enabled by default, but in Windows 10, it's not. I've included a brief guide in the video description on how to enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in Windows 10. As always, it's also important to keep your graphics card drivers up to date. For this new tech to work, you need to have the minimum required driver versions for your graphics card installed. That's the scoop on AMD's upscaler. Now let's look at changes to the other upscalers. Intel's XE Super Sampling has been updated to version 1.3. On the NVIDIA side, you can now activate both DLAA and DLSS ray reconstruction simultaneously. CD Projekt Red also added a new tab to the settings menu, where you can find options such as HDD mode or hybrid CPU load balancing. Stability improvements and visual corrections were also made. One undocumented change is that you can no longer select full screen mode. Now you can only choose between windowed or borderless windowed modes. Of course, many people are asking what benefits the new upscaling tech, particularly FSR 3, brings. In general, it offers more FPS compared to previous versions, sometimes significantly more, especially with FSR 3. However, there is a major downside. FSR 3 doesn't necessarily look better than FSR 2.1. In fact, visually, it can look noticeably worse, which is likely why FSR 2.1 was kept in the game, allowing us to choose which version looks better to us. Again, it's a shame they didn't jump straight to FSR 3.1, as that version supposedly either eliminates or greatly reduces these visual issues. 
Here's a direct comparison between FSR 2.1 and FSR 3.0, followed by another comparison between FSR 3.0 and FSR 3.0 with frame generation. You'll definitely notice some differences. As you can see, frame generation significantly boosts FPS. We're talking nearly double in some cases. That's pretty amazing, but it comes at the expense of image quality. So I'll also run a comparison between auto mode and native AA mode, which improves the visuals, but of course causes the FPS to drop again. Still, it's better than FSR 2.1. Ultimately, whether the visuals are worth it is something you'll have to decide for yourself. As for being able to activate DLAA and DLSS reconstruction simultaneously, the verdict is that this combination significantly improves visual quality in games. DLAA sharpens edges and reduces visual artifacts, while DLSS ray reconstruction enhances ray traced effects, making them appear more natural. Although it doesn't provide the same performance boost as DLSS, it optimizes the representation of light, shadows, and reflections, resulting in a visually stunning experience. In other words, it's great, but it will cost you some FPS. In general, you'll have to experiment a bit to find what works best. High FPS are great, but if the visuals don't hold up, that's a problem. You should try out all the different technologies, including Intel's, which can deliver good results. Here's a direct comparison between Intel XE Super Sampling 1.2 and 1.3. 
you'll notice there aren't many differences in FPS. The improvements here focus more on visual quality than on squeezing out more FPS. If you're eager to try FSR 3.1 now, you can use a mod, which I've linked in the video description. The mod supports NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel cards. If you're already using this mod, you'll need to weigh whether the advantages of a native FSR 3 implementation outweigh the lack of FSR 3.1 support. I expect we'll see more in-depth tests in the coming days that will shed more light on this. Let's go back to the part of the update that's missing, namely the bug fixes. CD Projekt Red has already announced that there won't be any more major updates, so it was almost expected that no new gameplay components would be added, but I thought they would at least tackle a few more bugs, as there still seem to be quite a few, judging by what people are saying on X, Reddit, or in video comments. Some bugs seem quite rare, while others are more commonly reported. The question is, is CD Projekt Red aware of them? I can only recommend that you report any bugs to the devs. If enough people report the same issue, the chances of a fix increase. Otherwise, first check if the problem might be related to your own system or mods that haven't been updated or are faulty. With this update, as usual, there are many issues people label as bugs that are actually related to mods or their systems, not to Cyberpunk 2077 itself. The official CD Projekt Red support page is a good place to start if you run into any issues. The link is also in the video description. Now it's your turn. What do you think of the update? Share your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you next time in Night City.